Hello, welcome to the Andrew Lavery Show, where we talk about investing in the stock market and where we talk about using the stock market to help build wealth over time so we can all become self-made millionaires. In this video, we are going to analyze Bank of America, and we're going to analyze them just as I would as if I was considering making an investment in a company. If you stick around to the end of this video, I'll let you know if I think Bank of America is a good company to invest in based on everything that we see in the video, and I'll let you know what I think a fair share price is as well. Before we move on, I want to encourage everyone to hit that like button. Hit subscribe button and notification bell. I post new videos all the time. All right, before we move on, I do want to mention that we got the self made, future self made millionaire t shirt available now on Amazon. There's 10 different colors available. We got t shirts for men and women and six different sizes. So definitely check this out. Link down below in the description. All right. So the first thing I look for is does a company pay a dividend? That's not necessary, but that's just for me because I like dividend paying companies. And yes, you can see right here, Bank of America does pay a dividend. Happens to be 84 cents a year per share, which is 1.83% of the current share price. So now that we know that we pay a dividend, I'd want a little history on it. And the first thing I look for is how many years in a row has uh, Bank of America increased their dividend? And you can see just one year is what dividend.com is saying. Uh, I just want to double check that and come down here to the payout history. And you can click View All Payout History. And just scroll down. And right away I'm seeing, because you can see the increases right here in the, in the calendar year payout growth. So you can see that they're increasing the dividend. Dividend.com dividend needs to update that. So, all right, so since at least, so going in 2014, they had a big increase. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll say eight. So eight years in a row, they've increased the dividend by some some percentage. Um, all right, so they've been increased eight years in a row. It's pretty solid. I like to see at least ten years in a row, but you know, to each his own. If you want five years in a row, that's fine. If you want fifteen years in a row, that's okay as well. It's whatever makes you feel comfortable. Now that we know they've been increasing their dividend for eight years in a row. I want to know, make sure these dividend increases are keeping pace with inflation at the minimum. So I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom just to see. So we have, we have all of 1995. That's a lot of quarterlies. That's so weird. I've never seen a company pay so many quarterly dividends. First going to come, let me just come right up here. Uh, we'll go, we'll go 2000, even 2000. So Come back to 2000, they paid $1.03 for that year. So come to U.S. Inflation Calculator, put in 2000 and $1.03. <clears throat> and to keep pace with inflation, just to keep pace with inflation, Bank of America, since 2000 that is, Bank of America would have to pay $1.67 per year per share for their dividend, and they're paying $0.84. Cents. So they're not keeping pace with inflation since 2000. But let's take a little bit, let's, let's take a look a little closer to present day. So let's do 2016. 25 cents is what they paid that year. In 2016. And 25 cents. And just to keep pace of inflation since 2016, they would have to pay 29 cents per year per share. They're paying 84 cents. So they're not keeping pace with inflation since 2000, but they are keeping pace with inflation since 2016. There was a big, big decrease in the dividend right around 2009, I believe. I'll show that to you a little bit later. Actually, I'll just show you to you right now here in dividend.com. So scrolling down, um, you can see here. So 2007, they paid, I'm looking right here, paid $2.40 for the year. And then slight decrease in 2008. And then it just bottomed out right here. Four cents. What happened 2008 to 2009? Housing bubble burst. So um, the share price tanked as well for Bank of America. So this is probably the driver of this big decrease. And that's what that's the reason why their dividend is not keeping pace with inflation since 2000. Because you had this massive decrease. It's rebounding. It stayed at four cents, you can see, for quite a while. But finally started to rebound in 2014 and it's been rebounding ever since and it's just not 
up to where you know where it needs to be to be keeping pace with inflation since at least 2000 so something to keep in mind all right so coming back over to yahoo finance click statistics there we go and scrolling down i want to make sure our company is profitable we got the fourth quarter 2021 numbers up so that's good and you can see here look at profit margin operating margin and these are very healthy percentages here. I want to make sure these percentages are positive at the bare minimum, but higher is always better. So we got some good percentages here. Next, I want to look at is management effectiveness, return on assets, return on equity. I want to make sure these percentages are positive as well. Again, higher is always better. We'll take a little deeper dive into the operating margin and return on equity in a little bit in the video. But again, I want to make sure all four of these are bare minimum positive percentages here. Negative percentages are very, very bad. Now, next, I want to look at the quarterly revenue growth. YOYs is this year over year. So they're saying that the revenue for fourth quarter of 2021 is 12.5% higher than the revenue for fourth quarter 2020. So just comparing the two quarters, we're seeing a good, uh, decent revenue growth here at 12.5%. That's very, very good. I do like to see a positive percentage here. However, you do see some negatives from time to time. I try not to, get, I try not to hold against the company too much. So it doesn't concern me that much if I see a negative percentage here. But if I'm going to see a negative, I would prefer, you know, maybe, maybe negative 3% or negative 5%. See some really big negatives, say negative 30 or 40. Then that's, you know, that's a little iffy for me. But um, definitely like to see positives here, preferably. Next, quarterly earnings growth, again, year over year. So the earnings, which is another name for profit, the earnings for fourth quarter 2021 is 28.2% higher than, this, than the fourth quarter of 2020. So excellent sign there is a good sign. We got um, some good indication of revenue and earnings growth. So I'm, that makes me very, very happy. Um, let's see, total debt is $533.87 billion. Now, is that a lot of money for... Um, for Bank of America. The way you can tell that is by looking at the total debt to equity ratio, which they don't have here. Not available, I'm assuming NA means. Um, you could also look at the current ratio. See, the current ratio is for the short-term debt. The, debt to, the total debt to, equity, debt to equity ratio is for long-term debt. So usually I just look at the total debt to equity ratio. Yeah, I would have I would have been happy to see the current ratio if it was here as well. At least I can get an idea of the short-term debt, but um, at least with regards to the debt, total debt to equity ratio, um, I prefer to see anything under 100. Then, uh, you know, if it's slightly above 100, I've invested in companies that are in the 300s, but ideally under 100. So those lower payout ratios, it lets me know that whatever total debt amount you see, the dollar amount, that lets me know that it's not a lot of money if you have a low debt to equity ratio. If you have a high debt to equity ratio, say 500 or more, then that starts to tell me that the amount of money they have in total debt is a lot of money for them to take on. So, but um, we'll, uh, you know, it's not here for whatever reason. I'm not sure why it's not here, but that's what I would normally do is look at the total debt to equity ratio to, to determine if this $533 million, billion, dollar, excuse me, is a lot of money or is not a lot of money for Bank of America. All right, coming up to financials. And scrolling down just a little bit. Now we're on the income statement by default. All numbers are in thousands. And we're looking at the annual numbers. So we got, uh, we got the four most recent years here. So what I want to see is consistent revenue increases every year. And we're not seeing that. So a slight decrease in 2019, decrease in 2020. Doesn't surprise me. You know, 2020 was a rough year for everybody. And they did rebound in 2021, so that was good. Uh, it's still an overall downward trend as compared to 2018. So just compare 2021 to 2018, overall downward trend in the revenue. But at least, at least they started to rebound um, in 2021 as compared to 2020. So th that's definitely a positive sign, I think. Because I know 2020 was was a rough year for pretty much every business. Next, I go to cash flow. Again, all numbers are in thousands. And look at annual numbers, and I hit expand all. Now scrolling all the way down. Now we do not have 2021 numbers here for some reason. Um, it's probably going to come up here pretty soon, is my guess. 
uh, coming all the way down. Uh, let's see, I'm looking at the free cash flow right here. So what I want to see is a free cash flow increasing every year as well, and definitely not seeing that. So it's a big increase into 20, uh, what's this, what's it been, 2019 right here. Um, and then a decrease in 2020. Again, 2020 was a rough year, so I'm not surprised to see a decrease in the free cash flow. Hopefully there's a, uh, a good rebound here for 2021 numbers. Now, what I would normally do, and I normally do this for the most recent year, which is 2021, but they're not showing it here yet. And we also don't have it for 2020 as well. The common stock dividend paid, so this is blank as well. So we're going to do it for 2018. That's going to be 2019, so I can at least show you how to do it. And let me break up the calculator. So what I would do is find out the payout ratio. So of the free cash flow they had available to pay out in dividends, how much of the free cash flow did they pay out in dividends? So we'll do... Five nine three four zero zero zero. Don't use the negative. Uh, the negative is just there because it's money leaving the company, so that's why it's negative. And do divided by the free cash flow for the same year, and six one seven 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 zero zero zero. So only about nine point six percent. So nine point six percent of the free cash flow was paid out in dividends in uh, twenty nineteen. So this is a very very good payout ratio. I like anything under fifty percent. The reason being is when there's a decrease in free cash flow from one year to the next, which does happen. Um, you see it right here from 2019 to 20, yeah, 2019 into 2020. Um, it's not a big deal that they had. Well, it is a big deal that they had such a big decrease in the free cash flow. However, because they only paid out 5.9 billion dollars in dividends, they could still increase their dividend to say we'll say six and a half billion dollars, and that still leaves them plenty of free cash flow left over. So because they had that low payout ratio in 2019, it gives them a good buffer in 2020 to still be able to increase a dividend despite the free cash flow uh, decreasing so much. So one thing I forgot to explain is the reason why I look at the free cash flow and want it to increase every year is because the free cash flow is where your dividend money comes from. There's other reasons why it's important. Um, you know, free cash flow is always a good thing. You know, even for non-dividend paying companies, it's it's something you should be paying attention to. However, with the dividend paying companies, this is where your dividends come from. And if the dividend dividends are increasing every single year, there's an excellent chance that your um, your div or excuse me, if your free cash flow increases every single year, there's an excellent chance your dividends will increase every single year as well. But never a guarantee, of course, because nothing's ever guaranteed in the stock market. So, uh, but we're seeing here, hopefully, there's a uh, a rebound here in 2021 once this free cash flow for the for uh, the most recent year comes out. All right, so next, I'll come up here a little bit. There's a chart here on the side. Where is it? There it is, right here. So this chart here on the side. I like to look at this chart. Um, the revenue, we already saw. That's the green bar, but we didn't see the blue bar, which is earnings. So the revenue, we know, took a big decrease um, in 2020 and rebounded in 2021. So that's good. However, a big rebound in 2021. Um, yeah, and we're seeing an overall upward trend in revenue from... Uh, 2018 into 2021 so that's definitely a good thing and earnings as well so the earnings obviously earnings went down a little bit in 2019 big decrease in 2020 not surprising COVID-19 and then uh, a big increase in earnings in 2021 overall upward trend so we had uh, for earnings in 2018 we had 28.15 billion and 2021 Earnings were 31.98 billion. So overall upward trend for both revenue and earnings. So that that's good. I like to see a consistent increases every year, ideally. However, if I can't get that, an overall upward trend makes me happy as well. All right. So next, I will come to E-Trade. <clears throat> Click the fundamentals tab right here. And there's three areas I like to read here on the E-Trade. So Debt to, Bank of America's debt to equity ratio indicates that it has been more aggressive with using debt to finance growth than 89% of its peers in the same industry, banking industry. So, um, yeah, they're also oh, here. Here they give a debt to equity ratio 1.84. Um, the way Yahoo Finance will show it, it'll show it not as 1.84, it will show it as 184. So, if you're ever comparing Yahoo Finance and E Trade, or even maybe another online brokerage, and you're seeing 1.84, and you say, wait a minute, but Yahoo Finance said 184 or 183.8 or something like that. Um, 
that's 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 reason why they just they they show it differently here. 1.84 on Yahoo on each rate is 184 on Yahoo Finance. So debt to equity ratio of 184. That's not a big deal at all. So I wouldn't worry about that. Um, definitely, ideally, I like to see under 100 for the debt to equity ratio, but 184 isn't bad at all. And that lets me know that the 533 billion that they have out in debt really is not a lot of money for them to take on. It's something they can manage relatively easily. Um, with a decent amount of risk, nothing that, that's too crazy in terms of the risk involved with that. All right, so moving on here, uh, as indicated by the operating margin, Bank of America controls its costs and expenses better than 61% of its peers, so that's a good thing. Um, normally, there'll be a uh, little mention here in this paragraph about the gross margin, how much cash they have to spend on business operations as compared to their peers, but for some reason, it's not showing here because you got a, a blank number right here for gross margin. But normally you would see something about the gross margin in here as well. But this operating margin is showing that it's very, very good. They're well above average with regards to controlling their costs, which is a good thing. Next, management effectiveness. Return on equity for Bank of America shows it is able to reinvest its earnings more efficiently than 64% of its competitors in the bank industry, bank's industry. So definitely above average on, the de on their return on equity. So that's definitely a good thing. So management seems to have a good handle on things, which is, which is excellent. All right, so that's the last thing that we'll look at with regards to the overall analysis of the company. Now, what about that share price? Let's take a look at it. So right now, the share price as of January 27, 2022, share price is $45.47. I calculated a fair share price of $71.06. And the way I came up with that is I figured out the average di uh, dividend yield which I went and looked, uh, went back to January 1st, 2008, June 1st, 2008, January 1st, 2009, and so on down the line. So again, two samples a year. I figured out what the annual dividend was on January 1st, 2008, what the closing share price was that day, and from there I can get a dividend yield. I do that for June 1st, 2008, and so on down the line, get two dividend yields a year, average them together. And then... I came up with 1.18%. Now I did omit three dividend yields because they were abnormally high. These three right here, um, not, over 10.5%, almost 20%. That, that's just those. Those are just kind of freaks of nature. Those I did not include because you see the rest of the dividend yields are very very low. And then once it starts to rebound, the dividend that is here on January 1st, 2015, um, it starts to go up into the 1%, even hitting uh, upwards of 3% range down here so um, i omitted these three right here normally i would include them but they're just way way off and it would have thrown the average dividend yield off so i get the average dividend yield and then you can see i take the current annual dividend per share and divide that by the average dividend yield and then i'm able to get 71 dollars and six cents so by my estimation bank of america is underpriced by 36 percent just my humble opinion now, overall, would I buy Bank of America? I think, honestly, I think I would say no. Um, and the reason being is, the, I mean, the profit margin seems great. The operating margin seems great. Their, their debt to equity ratio is not a big deal. So their debt's not a big deal. Management seems to know what they're doing. You know, their management seems to be doing pretty well. So there's no issues there. The cash flow, I think it's probably going to rebound in 2021. So that that's definitely a good thing. But um their dividends, their dividend history that's really holding me up. So you can see here, um, their annual dividend was two dollars and fifty six cents on January first, two thousand eight. Um, you know, two thousand nine hit and it decreased at buck twenty eight, and then six months later it was at four cents, and then it stayed at four cents for quite a while before it started a rebound here in in twenty fifteen. So it's that it's that. That dividend history, I, you know, I understand why the, the, dividend, the dividend decreased because of the housing bubble pop. So Bank of America was affected, I'm sure, you know, very drastically affected. So, so I totally get why they decrease it. But I want a, a business in my portfolio that no matter what life throws at it, it's, there's going to be ups and downs in the stock market. There's going to be recessions. There's going to be depressions. Those, those will happen. But I want a company that can not only continue to pay a dividend in those hard times, but still be able to increase the dividend. Even if the increase is going to be smaller 
than the, maybe the year before. Say a company on average increases their dividend by 7% every year. A recession hits. And in the recession, instead of increasing by 7%, it can only increase the dividend by 3%. Fine. It still was able to increase the dividend. The, the increase had to be a little smaller because the company has fallen on hard times because of the recession. But it's still able to weather the storm well enough to still be able to increase the dividend, even though it was a much smaller increase than, you know, the handful of years looking back, looking back a handful of years. So um, that's the kind of company I want in my portfolio. And I don't see Bank of America being able to provide that. Their history has shown they can't. We ha we're, are we going to be on another recession here coming up? Um, there's a lot of signs that maybe there's going to be a recession in 2022. The stock market will continue to go down. Will Bank of America have to cut its dividend again? Or is it the only reason why they cut their dividend in 2008, 2009 is because um, it was a housing housing bubble that burst that caused the recession. And I'm sure Bank of America, being a bank, was heavily involved in the mortgages that were all that people were defaulting on. So was that the reason why? And this recession, potentially, if we have one in 2022 or 2023, will they be, for the most part, insulated from it? Because you know, there's not a, it's not an issue with housing this time. There wasn't a big house. There isn't a big housing bubble. Um, I don't know. I have, you know, I have no idea. Um, housing prices are, are way way up. You know, could we see a big collapse in housing prices if a recession were to hit now? And will we see um, you know some people defaulting on their loans? You know, I have no idea. So. But I do know what the past of the, the dividend history shows me, and uh, this is not something that I would want in my portfolio to see a big, massive decrease in the dividend like this, and it sticks around. The big decrease sticks around for several years, and it still hasn't even fully recovered yet. So I would have to pass on Bank of America. But if you're interested in it, I think they are undervalued by 36%. So if you want, if you want to jump in, I think it's now. I think they're. I think they're at a great price. But that's all I got for everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you have questions, leave those down below in the description for me. If you have any comments, critiques on the channel, let me know. Remember, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, notification bell. I post new videos all the time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.